and we're back with Ethan Politics. Let's turn to education. How important do you believe it is to allow charter schools in the state of Maine? I think it's very important. One of the reasons, Logan, that we have been unsuccessful in being innovative in our educational uh, system here in Maine is because we have not allowed publicly funded charter schools. Mm -hmm. uh, they are laboratories of innovation. Uh, we can uh, be very flexible in how we pay the teachers based in part on merit. We can be innovative in the programs that we offer in charter schools. Uh, it's a terrific opportunity for our public schools to learn to do things possibly slightly differently. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very, very open to those sort of innovative techniques in our education system. Why do you believe we don't have them now? Well, because the legislature does not allow, for example, charter schools. So that's mm -hmm. one example. Second of all, there is a $4.5 billion pool of money in the last stimulus program from Washington that is becoming available to those states who are innovative in the strategies that they embrace in their education system. Maine has not even been able to submit uh, a, a request for that funding because we lack innovation at state level. Uh, how can we improve our school systems overall? Here's the way I look at it. I'm a business manager. We have a very expensive school system and we're getting an average product. Mm. When I was growing up, Logan, in Waterville, my father uh, was a school teacher. He's retired now, but he taught school in Waterville for 25 years. Uh, I'm a product of both public and private education. I ran the Board of Trustees at North Yarmouth Academy for a number of years. I understand the importance of education mm -hmm. uh, for our kids here in the state. Not only is it their ticket out of poverty, but also it's part of our economic engine. Companies want to come to Maine only if there's going to be an educated workforce ready to proceed. The problem is we are spending so much on administrative overhead that we can't get the money in the classrooms where it belongs. We have to be very serious about reducing administrative overhead, getting that money into the classroom where the kids are, and as I mentioned earlier, being innovative and looking at other states and what strategies they use to better educate their mm -hmm. kids without spending more money because we are broke. I'm a business manager. I'm not a politician, so I call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. We have no more money. So the challenge is how do we get a better education experience for mm -hmm. our kids without spending more money? Now, in the Portland school systems, the ones I'm in right now, we are in a budget crisis. Do you believe there's a way to get the money back without cutting jobs? Well, I'm sure that the school systems at the local level, Logan, don't want to be dictated by state government how to mm -hmm. educate their kids. So I am really focused on our state problems. Mm -hmm. And the education system is a real problem. It's 50% of our budget. And as I mentioned to you before, it's very expensive, very top heavy in its costs. And the product that we're getting uh, at the local level is, uh, uh, can be a lot better. Uh, but I am focused really at the state level and not at the local level. Let the city of Portland deal with, with uh, that specific problem mm -hmm. of educating their kids locally. It says on your website that Maine taxpayers are spending plenty on education, but our students are receiving a subpar experience. Why is this? Is the money being spent unwisely? Yeah, I think it is uh, in many regards. Um, great teachers, Logan, inspire kids. So mm -hmm. we need to do everything humanly possible to retain the best teachers possible for our students in this state. Mm -hmm. uh, however, there are lots of tools we can help them that we're not providing for them. Mm -hmm. One is a very uh, innovative uh, way to pay teachers based in part on merit. There are a lot of folks, a lot of rather school systems around the country that have adopted these new strategies and we should look at them very seriously. Um, but if you look at the metrics and why I say we're getting a product that could be better, uh, let's, let's, let's call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. We have an average high school graduation rate here in Maine. We have a below average college wow. enrollment rate. And 40% of our freshmen in our community colleges are taking remedial courses because they're not ready. Mm -hmm. So we have to do better to help these kids, but we have to do it by being innovative and reducing administrative overhead in all levels of our education system. Why are more teachers not taking up the opportunity to get paid more and get more educated? Say, uh, ask that question one more time, please. When it comes to, you said, like the merit and the teachers get sure. more paid, get paid more to be more educated, basically, why do you think the teachers aren't doing that? Well, I don't know. I mean, in the private sector, we have an opportunity to base people on merit and on mm -hmm. accomplishments and on skills, uh, but they don't seem to do that in the education system. I think the uh, administrators uh, have to be open to this, mm -hmm. our teachers have to be open to this, the unions have to be open to this, but it must start at the top 
from mm -hmm. a governor who understands the education issue, who understands how important it is, and someone who will call a spade a spade and tell the truth and move on and get a better system for our kids. Let's turn to our environment. How can we protect Maine's natural landscape? Well, we're doing a pretty good job of that now, and we have been doing a good job of that over the past 50 years. We need to make sure that we have a governor that understands that it is part of our brand. Mm -hmm. The biggest industry, Logan, in our state is tourism. It mm -hmm. employs 175,000 of our citizens directly. So we have to make sure that we protect that brand. At the same time, we have to make sure that we have an inviting business climate so we can in introduce and, and give folks incentives to invest here and create jobs. Because a great landscape, a great environment doesn't help if you can't live here. Mm -hmm. One of the projects that I have, one of the companies that I run, I er mentioned to you earlier, is this housing construction firm in the Midcoast area. We have a terrific product terrific project where we have uh, 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 preserved, for example, 130 out of 180 acres for mm -hmm. wildlife habitat uh, forever. Uh, that's good business because people want that and they're attracted to that community as a result, but it's also very good for our natural environment. And we'll be right back with you some politics. Don't go away.